Hello and good day. Welcome back to our class. This is Teacher Onidi Guzman and our topic for today is Sources and Uses of Short-Term and Long-Term Funds for Business Finance. One of the sources of long-term and short-term finances is the debt financing. Debt financing can be in the form of borrowings from banks and other leading institutions of debt securities like commercial papers and bonds. So we have the following benefits or advantages. So number one, interest expense is tax deductible. Number two, it allows the company to grow without diluting the interest of the controlling stockholders, meaning to say the direction of the company lies only on the stockholders. And of course, number three, creditors generally do not intervene in the decision of the management. However, we have the following disadvantages. So it creates a contractual obligation for the borrower to pay the interest and principal. Specifically, here are these advantages. Number one, too much debt can expose the company to a bankruptcy. Number two, the attention of the managers will be divided. So managers tend to fix the debt rather than operations of the company. Another source of short-term and long-term finances is the equity financing. So it refers to issuance of new shares of stocks and retain earnings flowed back into the operations of the company. So we have the following benefits. It does not require any mandatory payment of dividends. Number two, you can control the company if you have enough shares. And number three, it provides financial flexibility. However, we have the following disadvantages. Cash dividends are not tax deductible. Number two, offering new shares to other investors may dilute the ownership stake in terms of existing stockholders. And number three, it is the most expensive source of financing. So at the onset, it does not appear to be expensive because there are no mandatory payments for dividends. Following are the reasons to figure out that equity is more expensive than debt financing. So most companies opt to have debt financing. Let there be a company which is in the process of liquidation cannot distribute anything to stockholders unless the claims of the creditors have been satisfied first. Next is also borrowers are more assured cash dividends are not guaranteed. And if a company does not perform well, the stockholders absorb the losses. Based on the reason presented, it is clear that stockholders bear the most risk in a company and therefore should demand higher returns. Let's discuss briefly the pecking order hypothesis. So it was developed based on repeated observation on how companies fund their financing requirements and we have the following. Internally generated funds, these are the funds that come from operating cash flows. Number two is the debt. When internally generated funds have been exhausted, debt financing is the next alternative. And finally, we have the equity. So this is the last resort. So the last priority list in financing because it is more difficult to issue new shares of the stocks. Let's discuss the, in details the sources and uses of short-term funds. So again, short-term funds are normally used to finance the day-to-day -day operations of the company. So let's have number one. So that is supplier's credit. So suppliers of raw materials and merchandise are the best sources of short-term working capital. This is the reason why a good relationship has to be nurtured with suppliers. Number two, advances from stockholders. If you have enough personal assets and you control the company, advancing funds to the company when there are financial requirements is easy way for the company to raise funds. Number three, credit cooperatives. 
To borrow from credit cooperatives, you, you have to be a member. Credit cooperatives can lend as much as five times of your equity or contributions. Number four, bank loans. Banks can provide both short-term and long-term loans. Some banks also provide credit facilities not just for big corporations, but also the small and medium enterprises. Number five, lending companies. There are small lending companies which cater normally to small and medium enterprises. The lending process is much faster as compared to banks, but they have charged higher interest. And finally, informal lending sources. So such as 5-6, this is very expensive source of financing and should be avoided. Let's discuss now the sources and uses of long-term plans. So it is also known as the capital investment. It can be also used to finance permanent working capital requirements. So we have the following sources. So number one is the equity investors. Equity investors can be issued common stocks. This is the most patient source of capital. As far as the company is concerned, this is the safest source of financing. Unfortunately, this is not always available when the company needs it. The second one is the internally generated funds. Instead of declaring cash dividends, so the company can use internally generated funds for expansion or to finance other types of capital investment. Number three, banks. Banks are sources of different types of financing from short term to long term. They provide lower interest rate as compared to other financial institutions, but they have a lot of requirements and borrowers go through a process, normally taking a month to three months before a loan gets approved. Number four, bond market. So this market is gaining more popularity among our big publicly listed companies for their fundraising activities. And finally, we have the lending companies. These are the same lending companies previously discussed. So some of them also provide long-term loans ranging from 2 to 5 years. These lending companies can process loans for faster, but they charge higher interest rates. So when companies have identified good investment opportunities they want to pursue, Financing is generally a combination of debt and equity. It is just a question of how much of the funding requirement will come from debt and how much will come from equity. While there seems to be an abundance of funds available for small medium enterprise, the reality is that SMEs are not able to avail most of these facilities for many reasons. So here are the following reasons for the inability to take advantage of available financing. So number one is the limited track record. Number two, limited acceptable collateral. Number three is inadequate financial statements. And number four is lack of business plans. The potential creditors of this SME cited the following reasons for rejecting the loans applications so number one is we have poor credit history second is insufficient collateral number three is insufficient sales income and cash flows number four unstable business type and number five we have poor business plans so the lack of reliable information about smes make it difficult for the potential fund providers to assess their credit worthiness. Blocks or banks find it a lot easier to evaluate big companies when there is abundance of disclosure of news about them. For SMEs, there's not much information available as basis for determining their credit worthiness. This situation actually derails the growth of these companies. In case your loans will be granted, here are your duties as a borrower to creditors. So number one, pay the creditors based on the payment schedule agreed upon. Second, 
provide the collaterals as agreed upon in loan negotiation with proper documentation. Next is comply with the provision on the loan covenant such as maintaining certain liquidity and leverage ratios. Also, notify the creditor if the company is acquiring another company or the company is now subject to acquisition. Number five, do not default on the loans as much as possible. So that ends our discussion. Again, this is Teacher on Andy Guzman. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel so that you will be notified about my new videos. Thank you.